We'll move on to the third talk for the day, which is from uh, Isabella Murillo Cabeza. I hope I pronounced all of that right from the University of Bristol. <laughs> He's doing a live microbiology labs online. So really looking forward to this. Thanks, Isabel, whenever you're ready. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my experience in, in, in practicals here with all of you. Um, so um, I'm a lecturer in microbiology and I run the practicals for first year students. So um, uh, obviously as uh, David was pointed out, we have been uh, challenged um, very uh, during this uh, pandemic um, with our practicals. So just to, um, to give a little bit of context, um, I based in the life science faculty uh, in the School of Cellular and Molecular Medicine. Um, um, what I'm going to focus this um, talk is on um, first year's microbiology unit. So it's a big unit, it's 220 students, which makes everything even more challenging. So the, this unit has um, three hour sessions and they are uh, five different lab practicals per, per the unit. The practicals are compulsory and the assessment of that um, uh, part of the, the lab practicals is based on pre-tasks and post-tasks and then contribute toward the 20 final uh, unit mark. So uh, uh, in our faculty, we embraced uh, across all the units flip teaching. So it's something that we have done for many, many years. And that was thank, uh, thanks to the um, creation of eBioLabs. Um, uh, that eBioLabs, uh, it's a, um, a platform, a website platform that allows us to uh, provide uh, many resources online. Uh, here on the right hand side, you can see Gus Cameron, who is the director of eBioLabs. And some, uh, sorry, um, here you can see um, some um, um, screenshot of simulators that we have, like for example, how to use a microscope or how to use a centrifuge. So um, for second and third years, this was the normal thing to do. Uh, and for first years and now due to the uh, current pandemic, it has been obviously a little bit challenged. Uh, we, also incorporate a blackboard as many, many other university as, um, as a part of how we deliver uh, our material, our units. So we use eBioLabs and also we, you lose, uh, we use a blackboard. I will show you later on a, how a eBioLabs um, is, uh, works a little bit at the end of this talk. So um, why we use both is because uh, Blackboard, it gives a little bit more versatility in terms of what we can post um, uh, as extra material for this uh, current situation. Uh, whereas before eBioLabs was absolutely perfect for everything that we had when we used to give face-to-face uh, -face, um, lab practicals. Now we need an extra support from Blackboard as well. So I just uh, wanted to go through how these um, uh, practicals have evolved uh, uh, along the last uh, uh, past year due to the uh, pandemic. So we, we have a very well established um, lab practical model across different uh, schools in our faculty. And obviously we were forced to change that model. Um, it, during the first lockdown, it was just everything was in a rush. There were not many uh, lab practices left at that point uh, uh, in March. So uh, we're not really time for improvisation. What we opted was to do a the easy way. We have eBioLabs, we have everything posted there, and then we just uh, given a PowerPoint recorded presentation for the students. Uh, we gave some um, uh, um, techniques that we filmed in the lab, and we also uh, gave some data sets. This academic year, at the beginning, uh, we thought, well, if we do, if we schedule everything online, then if it's able to do face-to-face, -face, it's going to be very tricky because of the timetabling uh, team and the crashes. So we decided to uh, uh, provide alternatives, uh, practicals from face-to-face -to, -face to online and so on. The problem was that obviously many students were in self-isolation and therefore that meant that face-to-face -face also means to give online material to the students. So we provide um, 
two types of uh, practicals. So we, we did um, also live online and provide the recording of those um, uh, live online sessions. So basically uh, what we were looking for is a style or format that gives the best experience uh, without going to the, in the lab like uh, everybody else. So this is what it looks like, what the evolution of our lab practicals. So uh, during the first lockdown, we opted for e-bio labs, everything online, and then provide the um, PowerPoint recorded. During the second lockdown, we were doing live uh, Life online um, supported with Blackboard, Collaborate, and also everything recorded. And then during this third lockdown, because as David said before, we planned to do face to face, and that with not um, no, not really warning, we had to do online. And um, due to the constrictions with the time uh, timetabling, we weren't able to do things in advance. So we were re really pressed on time. So during this third lockdown, we have added more elements. And one element, one component that it um, seems to be very good for us is the live broadcasting. So um, as I show you the next one, I'll explain what I mean by this. So this is the current format that we are using for our practicals. So um, what we have is um, different components. We we'll start with an introduction and we do this in, it doesn't show here, but it's in Blackboard Collaborate. And that introduction is about 20 minutes. We are talking about three hours practicals and we are talking about 220 um, students, massive cohort. And also obviously we have extra help with some demonstrators and other uh, academics. So uh, introduction about 20 minutes, and that allows us to record the attendance very nicely uh, because of Blackboard um, uh, support. And um, because as I said before, they are compulsory, so we need to have the register. And then uh, during the introduction, I give the link to the next platform that we are going to use, which is Zoom. Okay, so um, in uh, that, that way, I also kind of force the students to come to the introduction. So, so then after this 20, 30 minutes, we all uh, meet in Zoom. And, and there we have a uh, connection with a live research lab. In the, that lab, I have a colleague, I have another academic that is going to live broadcast some of uh, the research they are going to give us a tour in a real research lab. And that seems to be, uh, from the point of view, the, uh, the students very engaging because it's different uh, to what they are used to. So um, this uh, depends on the academic. It lasts for 20, 30 minutes. Um, and then um, I'll show you later what I have prepared. And then uh, we uh, go to groups work. And we also use uh, breakout rooms, as David uh, said for his uh, uh, masters. So we still, uh, we stay in Zoom. We allowed about one hour uh, and 30 minutes so on uh, to work with Padlets. So we use Padlets and I'll show you later how that is. Um, it's very, uh, it's a tool, digital tool that allows collaborative and engaging work in groups. It's actually working very well for us. Um, so the last part of the uh, uh, practical would be uh, in Zoom, a uh, wrap up, uh, uh, going through the results from Padlets, uh, uh, answering some questions, and I give the whole information that the students need for the post lab quiz. So it's a way of reassuring the students what they have done during the, the Padlet, the work in, in the breakout rooms. So breakout rooms, um, so why? It seems very logical. Uh, so we, we uh, use also a Blackboard Collaborate, but um, it has very limitations. So first of all, um, the, the, um, the Blackboard is much more demanding in terms of bandwidth and the students seems to have all issues with connectivity, bouncing uh, forwards and backwards. So uh, we have a maximum of 20 groups, which th that means that I cannot make a group as, as small for what I want them to do. And there are only five images at this at a time. So if there are groups of six, for example, there is one always is going to be uh, hidden. So we decided to go through uh, Zoom because it's much more versatile. 
and uh, allows also the students to decide it to go, well, allows flexibility in terms of going to the breakout rooms, going to the main room if they have any questions. Although obviously Zoom provides many other uh, um, uh, ways of connecting, like uh, contacting the main room, like the chat or ask for help and so on. But also with the, this cohort, uh, it allows us to have 37 groups or more of uh, five to six uh, students, which is fantastic. Um, so Padlet, uh, I don't know how familiar uh, uh, with, uh, you are with this, but um, it's actually something that I came up with the pandemic and it's actually a fantastic digital tool. It is a website that provides um, kind of canvas, digital canvas, where I, we can post anything of um, materials, like for example, we can embed videos, we can embed tasks or PowerPoint presentations. The students are working in collaboration I, from my point of view, I can uh, monitor the engagement of the student, how they evolve during the process of the task. Uh, and I can use as many padlets as I want for uh, every task. I can use, I normally use one padlet per experiment to make it a little bit clear. And obviously the uh, layout or the format of the padlet are also quite versatile. They have different, eight different options. Okay, so what I would like to do now is to show you uh, what I, um, I've done in, in the online. Okay, so I need to stop this. And you still continue seeing my screen? Can you see Biolabs now? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, so this is how a Biolabs look in 2021. So uh, it's a fantastic resource. Uh, it was created in the Bristol University um, a few years back in 2007, I think. And then this is how it looks. So we have the uh, pre-lab, post-lab here, all the techniques, um, experimental information. And then here we have the tables um, of contents and any um, interactive or simulators that we, for example, I show you interactive microscope so that it, when the students click here, they have different parts of the microscope and then they have a small video um, um, teaching how to use that and so on. Um, so for example, in, uh, no, sorry, another one. Yeah, I'm staining, they have also uh, some videos and they can learn ahead of the uh, practical. So that is um, in terms of uh, eBioLabs and then moving into Blackboard. Um, so we have the, our uh, units uh, organized by week. So in week 16, for example, we have this um, online practical one. And uh, it's, um, we put in, well, I, I populate this in a way that students can navigate easily uh, through the practical. So first of all, we have the recording of the introduction plus the um, presentation that I used. Then we have the connection with the research lab. Here is my colleague, uh, John Tyrrell, showing uh, his lab. And in this uh, recording, he also uh, showed the students um, antimicrobial resistance um, techniques and his research. So that was very engaging. And uh, in the part three, I use the, it's, it's used for the wrap up session. And here, what I want to show you is how we embed uh, the Padlets. Okay, so in this case, this is experiment one. Uh, what I have done here is to use this uh, canvas to post different exercises from experiment one. So they also have here a link to the digital tool, which I uh, want to show you. So that is a digital microscope. So the students have four um, different uh, slides where I'm staining and when they click in here they need to just magnify it as they will do in a microscope and then obviously they have to answer many questions that are in the um, task. So equally I can post these kind of pictures and then ask them about um, the results. So for example, here they have also a movie uh, when we talk about motility, they can see 
how they would be seen if they were in the in in our lab. So that is for each um, experiment. I have one um, padlet. So here I have uh, something that we uh, did in the lab with um, two of my colleagues, um, showing how this specific experiment was done with the protocol here. So this obviously can be enhanced by clicking this arrow. Here they have the result of that experiment so they can answer the questions. They post their questions. Um, first of all, they need to say which group they are, okay? So as they, these are populated, uh, I can uh, monitor everything that they are doing. So from my point of view, it's really uh, easy. So here experiment three and here is experiment four, the last one. So in this case, again, they have another um, uh, video here done in, uh, filmed in the teaching lab showing how to, uh, so that can be amplified, how they did this. And then it's much easier to understand what I'm showing here as a results, okay? So later on, they, we say this is what happened after the incubation. You have here E. coli and you need to measure the incubation halos, but obviously they cannot do it. So what we do is we provide them with this, with the um, plates and also a ruler so they can measure the millimeters and then they can post here the results each group the results. Okay, so, um, so that is um, what I wanted to uh, show you. Um, I'm going to add this into the chat. So if you want to um, also look how this looks in the website, um, you can look at them. So I'm going to paste this here. You get, I put the, that uh, Padlet in the chat, so if you want to click it, you will see how it looks. Brilliant. And I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. That's fantastic. Uh, I really like the use of Padlet in that. So I've used Padlet in my own teaching, but never to quite to that level of uh, sort of interactivity. So that's uh, something I'm going to sort of have a look at, but that was really, really good. Thank you. Uh, David's asked, how did you allocate the students to the groups? Was it self-allocated or random for the breakout rooms? Yeah, that is a very good question because we passed it during the first teaching block, we allocated randomly because we thought, well, they are first years. If they have different groups, they might need more students so they can have, you know, a more social life. In this second teaching block, I opted to assign groups. So they have in, in eBio Labs, they have the list of the groups. So they know which group they are. So when they come in into the Zoom, we ask them to put the number of the group in front of the name. Uh, so in that way, uh, we, if there is any problem, we can move them into the breakout rooms or uh, they also can now, because obviously there are more flexibility with Zoom, they also can go into the breakout rooms. That's clever. Uh, Julia has made a comment. She said, uh, it looks like you integrate some image J or other software analysis tools for cell counting and measurements from micrographs too. So uh, it looks like you've got a potential collaboration between the West Coast. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that would be neat. I mean, we do similar things in our, in our undergrad labs and it would be great to get them able to do something uh, on their own as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the palette really has changed the way that we interact with um, students. Yeah. Because it's very easy. You are in the main room, you have all the palettes open, and you see that they are really engaging. And if they have any problem, um, they also can ask for help. So you move into the uh, breakout rooms. Because we, we obviously we have evolved. So before we were so obsessed about the students being in breakout rooms, having problems, we went in and out constantly. But now it's a little bit disruptive. So I think now we are going, we, we are moving into the idea that if they need help, they will ask. We go in and out, but not that often as before. I, I really like, I, I think one of the strengths of what you've got there is the actual workflow of that. I think that's really, really powerful what you've done. Um, just some comments coming through about so like people liking the, the Padlet thing. 
Uh, David's asked, did you see collaboration or collusion, I think, uh, between groups swapping analysis, things like that? Or is it, they, are they set up so that you can prevent that? Or in terms of, I think he, he means, David, do you want to unmute and maybe expand on that slightly? Yeah, I was just, I was thinking about, so that if they've got similar data sets, they could, you know, it could be a, a one, one group gets it quick and disseminates it through a back channel of WhatsApps to all the others. And... Um, we, yeah, we, you, we, yeah, you are right. Yeah, you are right. But what happened is that that data is not going to be for the post uh, lab uh, work only. So I will give different set of data. I have tried um, with the other in TV one, in teaching block one, I have a, a, a smaller cohort and I gave two set of data and I said, well, odd number groups with odd numbers, you do this set and with even numbers, you do that. But I mean, it's, it's, it's very complicated to go away of the problem that you are pointed out. Yeah, I saw, I saw very similar things in my problem solving exam questions of 10 answers all written differently, but had the same misconception in them or had the same general approach as that you clearly been talking to. Yeah, about. yeah, that's why it's important in the wrap up, go through the padlets and I pointed out if there is something that is um, uh, an obvious mistake or, or misconception, as you said, to, to that is the moment to say, okay. And then also what we have is at the end of the week. So this happens on Mondays, at the end of the week, we have a Q&A session for all the lectures during that week. And in that session, they have also opportunity to ask again if they have any doubt. Yeah, 